Hi, it's Shirley with Polymer Clay TV. I'm back today to show you how to make a home decor project. A lot of polymer clay artists do a lot of jewelry, including myself, but I like to change it up every once in a while and do a home accent. So let's get started on this fun project. These are what we're going to make for today's project, and they are custom-made polymer clay shower curtain rings. And the technique is using a mold that you're going to actually mold something that you have created yourself. These are, these are the supplies that we're going to use today. First you need to find plain metal shower curtain rings and these were actually called shower curtain pins and I found them in the hardware store. Uh, and then you're going to just need some scrap clay which is really nice to use some of your scraps. Some more scrap clay and this I've conditioned so it's one color. I'm going to just use a black and a white for my sample today and these are in the cube form. A fine spritzer bottle of water and you'll want a clay gun of some sort that will give you these ropes of clay. So you need the disc that has the circles in it. Here are two samples of the original piece that we're going to make a mold from. Now, it's really nice to use the clay gun because then when you make these ropes of clay, they're very even. And so we're going to try one of these. You can do any design you want. This one's a little more complicated. This one's very simple. So we're just going to take the scrap clay and first what we're going to do is just press it down because you want a base pad of clay. Okay, and then you want to make sure that it's fairly round and I'll show you why later. The actual shape of the outside edge does matter on these. So that's pretty round. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and take a clay gun and you're going to twist the end. And like I said, I've got the disc in there with the circles. So then all these cute little ropes of kind of hair come out. And you really don't need too much because it gives you a lot at one time. That's probably good. I usually don't make any squiggles longer than that. And I just kind of pull them off using my thumb. And you've got all these great ropes of clay that are even. So I'm going to start with one rope of clay. And you can put it on the pad any in any design that you want. So um, I think it'd be easier to show you something just like a squiggle. So we're just what we want to do is start at the very edge. So you want to make the design go all the way to the edge. And I think I'm maybe just going to go up and down with this one a little bit. And as you know, if you've worked with polymer clay, it sticks to itself, so you don't need anything under there. And then I'm just going to use my fingernail, but you can use a slicing blade and just cut that little piece off. And I think I'll take another longer piece. I'm just going to kind of follow that squiggle. And you would keep adding those until you filled up the whole piece. So I've got all my little squiggle designs set. And I also like to, when I make these, take the rope of clay, pull just a little bit off. I'm using about an eighth of an inch, roll it between my finger and my thumb, and make little balls of clay because those come out very nice too with the design. And I'm just kind of filling in the outside edge so I've got them kind of in a circle there. So then, from here, you're going to take this piece and put it onto a ceramic tile and bake that. And so then we're going to pretend I'm putting it in the oven and baking it. And you're going to come out with something like I had shown you before. So these are the finished ones. This is hard. And we'll go ahead and use this one as a sample. Um, here's the two molds. Actually, I'll show you that. These were the two molds that I made from the two uh, designs. So let's just use one. So basically, to make this mold, you're going to take your scrap clay that's already been conditioned and you need a larger, maybe a, almost a three-quarter inch, a little bit bigger uh, inch ball. Soften it up. This one's been sitting here just a little while. And then the same thing basically as we did on the base is we're going to flatten it, but this time not quite as much. What I like to do now, I'm working on a non-stick pad, is flip it over because then I know that that spot was nice and flat. And again, you want a good circle on that. Okay, and it needs to be, as you flatten it, make it just a little bit larger than your design pad there. Okay, and here's where the water comes in. You're going to take and spritz the, spritz the clay with a little bit of water. Take your design and you're going to center it. Press it right down into the clay, nice and firm. And this is where you just want to kind of make sure, go over it a couple times. And then what I like to do is take my finger and kind of push the clay inward all the way around because as you push that pad down, it separates and it gives you a little space and you don't want that space, you want it nice and tight in there. 
Now the water is used as a release, so this should come right out. And remember this one that's being pressed in was baked. So this is baked, this is raw, and you've got the mold that we've got right here. So this is the mold and now I have baked it. And so I'm gonna take that mold and spritz it with water. Give it a couple squirts there. And I've got a nice ball of conditioned black clay that's still warm. I'm gonna flatten that out into a pad just to get it started. A little smaller than the design. Okay, and then I just wanna wipe on the fingerprints. Put it right in the center of your mold and press down. Now, the reason I was talking about the edge and how large it is is because as you press, the mold area that is flat is going to cause there to be a lip on the actual piece, that, the black piece that I'm making, and you'll see that. So I'm gonna make sure that's really in there well. Okay, and then the water used as a release. And look at that, isn't that fun? Nice, deeply etched, and that's what you want. Now, what you need to do at this point is allow that to dry. Now, this, ne this next step is very important. You need to take something like a, a large, um, this is a purl and etch tool, and it's quite large in diameter, or you can use a wooden skewer, and you need to make that hole through there for your curtain ring. If you don't make it now, you're gonna have to drill it later, and I just like to do it before. And with this purl and etch tool, it definitely makes it easy. I'm gonna go about a quarter inch to the edge and then come right back out, and that is about the size that I need to fit into the ring. So, to decorate this, to get it from black to silver, I'm gonna use mica powders, and these are just little mica powders in a jar. This is silver, and I just like using my finger because your finger is rounded, and what that does is you just catch the raised areas of the design. See how well that picks up those raised areas? It's a little messy, but it's fun. And I can see one more thing I'm gonna to have to do to tweak this. I'll do that in a second. So, and I also like to go around that edge, that lip. See how that made a nice little circle around the edge? That's what you want. Now, because I made my hole in there, I wanna take my thumbnail and, excuse me, my fingernail and push that back down because that pooched it out so I lost my round shape. So basically you've applied the silver leaf and then you put that into the oven just like that and bake that. I wanted to show you the other finish that I've used on some samples that I'm about to show you. These use pastel chalks and they're soft pastels and I've just drawn some out on a piece of cardstock and I'm gonna just use my finger again. And the same idea that you did with the mica powders you're gonna do with the chalk particles and that is just go over the top. And of course you can use any color or a mixture of colors. I've actually made one where I used the three primary colors or hues. And you do wanna do that before you bake it so then this would go in the oven and I would bake that. So let me show you some samples that I've got here. I made a good variety of samples to show you that first of all, you're not limited to the, the shape of the mold. I only use the same two molds from the same two designs of those two to do round, kind of a rounded triangle, um, a, a rounded square edge, and then that one was a circle. And you can see all the different finishes. I'm sure that you've, if you've been doing polymer clay, you've done lots of finishes. Uh, some of these use chalks. This is the mica powders. Uh, most of these actually use the chalks, and then this was kind of a makume gane, which I did, and I had the, um, the raised areas. I baked that together, put layers of clay, and then sanded that off. So you can tell there's a large variety of what you can do for your shower curtains. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's project. I enjoyed showing you how to make those, and give them a try. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, and that's always nice. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.